Uh, gee, maybe we could start from a, a pretty broad level here. Uh, what role, if any, now that there's a, a deal agreement, uh, would the FCC have to review the terms of the transaction or to uh, maybe set any standards for, for how Twitter is treated? What, what really is the regulatory regime that has something to say about this, if any? There would not and certainly should not be any regulatory review from the FCC. There's no transfer of a license, for example, that would mm. predicate FCC review. Uh, moreover, at the FTC or the DOJ, as many have noted, there, you know, Elon doesn't exactly compete in the social media space as such. So there shouldn't really be any horizontal, as they say, antitrust concerns. And in terms of vertical integration, you know, even if you used it to promote Tesla, for example, or SpaceX, that's not the type of thing typically that the antitrust authorities would concern themselves about. So I think really the only question is you know, for some of the other regulatory bodies abroad or you know, the state by state review that, they, that will have to happen, which I expect to be relatively pro forma. This wouldn't be something that it would be a merger of competitors that would generate a lot of heat, uh, so to speak. Right. Um, and so a lot of the, the broader issues that keep getting churned up, in part because, you know, uh, you know, Elon Musk himself has said his motivation to own uh, Twitter in part is based on a commitment to free speech as he defines it and maybe different standards for moderating or not moderating content. Uh, where does the where does that leave things in terms of regulatory picture? I mean, you know, it's not as if, as you say, there's no licenses. This is not about, you know, a company granted any kind of uh, public airwaves or exclusivity. So uh, what are we talking about when we see the intersection of, of, of policy and what Twitter does? To me, it's entirely refreshing, and I hope that everybody in Washington, regardless of political affiliation, would see it that way. Free speech, as Elon pointed out in a statement yesterday, is one of the bedrocks of a functioning democracy. And one would think that everybody would agree with that basic principle here in the United States. And I think one of the reasons why Twitter has generated so much controversy is that its commitment to that core value has been called into question. And so even though you might hear some complaining in certain quarters about what this means uh, for the platform. I think the value of free speech is valuable enough that uh, that digital public square function is one that Elon is right to focus on. Now, of course, there are some business issues as well that he highlighted in his statement yesterday that are going to be a little more difficult to sort out. But here, too, I mean, Jack Dorsey said in a tweet yesterday, solving for the problem of Twitter being a company is something that he trusts Elon singularly with the solution for. So you will see how things play out on the business side, but certainly from say, a politics or free speech angle, I think this is a good development. Ajit, it's Morgan. I mean, just to go back, I guess, to the politics or at least policy making side of things, Section 230, it's been getting a lot of attention for a number of years now, and the debate by lawmakers to try and adjust or change or, or update that section. When you see a deal like this manifest, what does it do to those potential regulations? Does it make lawmakers move more quickly? Does it make lawmakers back off this debate? Uh, and I guess based on that, what's the read through two other social media platforms? It's a great question. I mean, certainly Section 230 has generated a lot of interest on both sides of the aisle. Uh, and I think that's only going to continue regardless of this particular transaction. The president, for example, uh, still maintains the position that Section 230 should be repealed. There are still various legislative vehicles to narrow it or to you know, change it uh, in Congress. And so I think those conversations are going to continue apace. But I think one of the reasons why Elon's approach is one that I think could take a lot of heat out of this issue is that I mean, if you embrace the idea of a social media platform like Twitter as a public square where anyone can participate so long as you're not uh, you're violating the law, you're engaging in things like child pornography or threats of violence and the like, that's something that everyone can agree on. Moreover, the transparency that Twitter will embrace, hopefully, under Elon's leadership and the new board's leadership or new company's leadership is something that I think would take a lot of sting out of this issue. One of the reasons why people are looking at Section 230 reform is really as a proxy for the fact that a lot of these social media companies don't explain their work. They don't show how the algorithm works and why people are kicked off or why people are downvoted and the like. And so I think this is something that you really could help address some of those issues and potentially depoliticize it, oddly enough.